samples. The weather observation at the Martha's Vineyard Airport at 9 o'clock was 8 miles visibility. That's well above the minimums needed for visual flight rules. At 10 o'clock, it was 10 miles. We've heard from a number of people who were down on the vineyard and on the Cape last night that the moon was visible. Uh, so it, it's pretty apparent that the sky was not, uh, there was no cloud cover, at least not a significant cloud cover. So six or eight miles visibility, that would put it well into the category of visual flight rules so long as the ceiling was at a thousand feet or better. It wasn't true. Kennedy had 17 years experience, over 300 hours of flight time, enough to qualify to become an instructor. He had recently taken the performance test to get his instrument license, allowing him to fly blind in the thickest fog and passed. But the weather was clear and he was legal to fly even with his old license under visual flight rules. So why did this mysterious person named the family say it? Are there members of the Kennedy family who enjoy Kennedy bashing? The description of Oswald mysteriously going out over the police radio indicates that the killers had infiltrated the Dallas Police Department. This baseless false report suggests that the killers have some of their people identifying themselves as the family and spreading lies. But for now, let's simply make the point that the person calling themselves the family and telling these vicious lies about John's license is also the source of the story that there was no flight instructor. And now let's have a good hard look at the question of whether there was a flight instructor on the plane. The early report that there was indeed a flight instructor on the plane came from an entirely reliable source, Carol Radowell. Remember how the FAA ignored all the calls from the family and now claims that no one from the family ever told them anything about a plane being missing? Radowell is the clever and resourceful family friend who called the Coast Guard at 2 a.m. while other family members were sleeping. Radowell told the Coast Guard there was a flight instructor on the plane, but how could she know? She wasn't on the plane. The NTSB says that no cell phones were used after the plane was in the air, so how could she know for sure what changes may have taken place in the moments just before takeoff? These are very good questions, and it's clear that she couldn't know for sure if there was a flight instructor on board, but neither could anyone else. No one could know for sure. She was guessing. But all guesses are not created equal. There are a dozen good reasons for her and you to think that there was a flight instructor on that plane. John always had a flight instructor. It's just a fact. In the weeks after the accident, the NTSB investigators could find no one who had ever known of an incident where John flew his new plane without a flight instructor on board. As far as anyone knew, John never flew that plane without a flight instructor. There was a reason for this. John had owned this plane for a little less than two months. It was much more powerful than his old plane and had lots of high-tech safety features like a very sophisticated autopilot that could help him fly much more safely once he learned to use these sophisticated safety features. So he needed a flight instructor to teach him to use these fancy guidance systems. It's just a fact. It had been an unusually hazy summer. John had flown to Martha's Vineyard eight times in the previous month. Of course, each time he had a flight instructor with him, but on five of his eight most recent flights, visibility was so poor that it would have been illegal for John to fly without a flight instructor because his license was for visual flight rules only, meaning visibility of at least four miles. In Caldwell, New Jersey, as John was arriving at the airport, the afternoon was already turning extremely hazy. So John had every reason to think that he was going to need to have a flight instructor with him on this flight in order to be strictly legal. And according to all of his flight instructors, he never broke the rules and was always very cautious in his decision making. So for John to have taken off alone, flying into weather that looked hazy along a route that he knew usually had poor visibility would have been totally unlike him. We mentioned earlier that John and his sister-in-law, Lauren Bissett, arrived at the airport at 7.30. Witnesses say Carolyn arrived 15 minutes later at 7.45, and yet, while conditions worsened, as the skies became more and more hazy, as the sun went down, the three of them sat around waiting for 45 minutes until 8.30 before taking off. Why? 
What were they waiting for? Can anyone suggest a more likely explanation or any other reasonable explanation at all other than that they were waiting for the flight instructor to show up? But suppose the scheduled flight instructor had not shown up. This would not be a problem for John. He routinely called them at a moment's notice for any sort of emergency. Things, Clark. Somebody originally said that he had a flight instructor because he was concerned about the cast on his, on his leg. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I heard uh, also someone suggest that he had a flight instructor with him because he is working on an instrument rating. And that's how you work on an instrument rating. You fly with the certified flight instructor uh, who sits in the right seat. You, are, you sit in the left seat and, as you normally would, and, and you fly, and the instructor's there to guide you and to take over, frankly, if, uh, you, know, if you get into any trouble. So th that those could be the two reasons there was some suggestion or speculation that he might have had a flight instructor. Let's take these two reasons one at a time. The second one first. Kennedy was working on his instrument rating, but he had passed the written exam. He had passed the performance evaluation, but he needed to log hours so that he had every reason to fly with an instructor and no reason to fly without one. And now let's get back to that first point. Things, Clark. Somebody originally said that he had a flight instructor because he was concerned about the cast on his, on his leg. Mm -hmm. In fact, Kennedy had the cast removed from his ankle the day before, but he was still on crutches. He did not need his feet to fly, but he did need them to move the plane around while it was on the ground. Flying with the injury was not impossible or even dangerous, but it was inconvenient. And what do millionaires like John buy with their money? They buy convenience. It would have been much more convenient for John to have a flight instructor along. But we're just getting started with his foot injury. You see, lots of people who cared about John were worried about him flying with a broken foot. It may not have been a real threat. You don't need your feet to fly. But it was an obvious problem that easily attracted people's attention. The Boston Globe for July 19th quotes a Canadian business associate who says that John told him that, for the time being, he'd rather fly with a co-pilot because his broken foot made it difficult for him to operate the pedals controlling the rudder. Richard Blow, his friend and co-editor at George Magazine, had lunch with John on Friday afternoon, the day of the crash. Blow describes their lunchtime conversation and says that he told John he was worried about him flying with the injured ankle. Don't worry, he said. I'm flying with an instructor. An instructor. And what do you think his wife is going to say? Here you have a guy on crutches because he crashed his mini plane three weeks before. Every time Carolyn looked at him, what did she see? She sees a guy on crutches because he crashed his mini plane three weeks before. How likely is it, do you suppose, that his wife is going to get on his plane with him without a professional pilot on board? You do the math. Ask any married man if you need help. The chances of her getting on that plane are a lot less than zero. It is incontrovertible that in the last seconds before takeoff, Kennedy may in fact have taken on a flight instructor. How can anyone say for certain that he didn't until the wreckage and the flight log were recovered? Oh wait, they claim they didn't recover the flight log. That means there's no official record of who was on the plane. And it's well recognized that in ocean disasters, just because they didn't find your body doesn't mean you weren't there. For example, when they finally located the wreckage, the Coast Guard and the Navy scoured the bottom for every piece of available evidence. Thousands of small pieces were recovered. Nevertheless, in spite of their search, one of the seats is missing. This seat wasn't eaten or dragged off by sharks. It's rather extraordinary that it should be missing since all the other seats were trapped in the wreckage. How did this one get loose and how did it get away? A minor point, maybe. The major point is this. If a large, durable, inedible piece of the plane is missing, why not a body, which could certainly have been dragged off and eaten in the five days that it took to recover the bodies? So, strictly speaking, without the official flight log showing who was on the plane, even today it would be irresponsible for anyone to try to state definitively that there was no flight instructor on board that plane. We cannot say for sure. We just don't know. Radwell may have been only guessing that John Kennedy Jr. had a flight instructor on the plane, but her guess is supported by an enormous amount of evidence. And while Radwell could not have known for certain that there was a flight instructor, the likelihood that John would have had a professional pilot on board is overwhelming. 
So then why did all the news reporters, every one, throw out Radawell's story in favor of one that could not be verified then and cannot be verified even now? Oswald was arrested because he matched a description that came from out of nowhere. Unseen forces 